So dead match is kind of one of those interesting tools that a lot of people are like, why do I need dead match? Um, should I do it or not do it? Uh, what do I gain from it? Well, I like to think of it as a playground for you and your DNA. That's all it really is, is a playground. Now, can you learn from that playground? Yes, you can learn to play nice with others or you can not play nice with others. Both those things are possible in JBED. It is a public database. So here is the way JET match. Is it still good? No, there, we're good. Okay, JED match has a bunch of free tools, uh, one to many, uh, and this is free. Don't have to pay anything, just put your DNA there. Um, one to many, uh, original version, uh, relationship probabilities, one to one autosomal DNA comparison, one to one X DNA comparison. Remember that X, that mystery X can be really a, a solver of brick walls. And we get the admixture, uh, admixture oracle with population search. Now, this is where you can compare your DNA to that Nathaniel man that we were talking about. It's pretty cool. It, it truly is. Um, then people who match both get one or two. So this is a shortcut to find your matches on GEDmatch. So let's say you and I are sisters. So I'm going to put both of our kits out there together on this tool. And then I'm going to use their search database. And it's going to bring me up a list of people that we share in common. But what if Laura was a first cousin on my paternal side? Now, that has a lot of merit because we could actually learn our paternal ancestors by comparing our DNA with everybody on their database. So then you have, are your parents related? And that's always a fun tool. You never know how that one's coming out. <laughs> um, and then they have a DNA file diagnostic utility. Believe it or not, if you are one of those folks that likes to put multiple DNA kits that you manage on GEDmatch, Trust me, you only want to do one at a time and put it in a folder and name it. Don't open it up. Remember a zip file and put that in one at a time because I have helped too many people that wanted to put two kits in and they put the same kit in twice and they didn't understand why they weren't getting any matches like they were expecting. Yes. The really uh, ignorant question. No. But if so, if I've done ancestry DNA, how would I, like, where is my DNA? How would I get my DNA from? Are you saying we can take our DNA results from ancestry and load it on here? Where, where are the detailed DNA results and how would I load it onto here? Well, when we get through here, can you bring that Ancestry yeah. uh, webinar back up and I will go show her. Yeah. It was on one of the profile pages, you know, where it said to download your download uh, your DNA or delete. It was in that area. So on what, online on the website rather than. Yes. And, and what Ancestry does, that's a really good question. What Ancestry does is that it um, makes you jump through a couple of hoops. First of all, you'll say you want to download your DNA. Then it'll say, um, what's your password? Now, remember, you're already signed in, but it's going to ask you for your password again, ask you for your email again. And then it'll say, oh, I think it asks you, are you sure? And you go, yeah. And then you, they download it. And then you have to know where those download files go. Mm -hmm. Every computer can be set up slightly right. different for sure. Okay, you want to put that download file in a separate file on your desktop so you know where it's at and then you name it your name or whoever you're doing ancestry dna okay once you have it where you want it and then i'll show you how you bring it back up um, on GenMatch. oh okay. okay all right so then i gotta tell you i never use that three d chromosome browser as, I don't know, Rich, do you use it? You're a GEDmatch user. Do you ever use that? I gave, up. I gave that one up. It's just too complicated. I don't think in three dimension. You know, I guess I'm not trained that way. 
but then the arcadic DNA matches. That's kind of a fun tool. Like I said, they've been digging up bones all over the world for you know hundreds of years. They've done these DNA tests on all these dug up people, and they've got microchondrial and Y DNA and Opsala DNA on it. And you can test your DNA against those people all over the world. So it's pretty, pretty kind of cool. Um, and then you can do ancestor projects, which is one that I've just started getting into um, probably about six months ago. All right, so remember I said JEDCOMS does what? You can download your DNA, it's called a JEDCOM. You can download your family tree, it's a JEDCOM. People get really confused by that. So make sure that you always say DNA JEDCOM or tree JEDCOM. Okay? Try to keep that straight. So here we go. So we want, whoops, sorry about that. Wait, there we go. Okay, so here is family tree, also known as JEDCOM. This is where you can you know, download your JEDCOM, your tree, from say Ancestry, and then you can upload, you can use the FAST, a lot of times that works. And if that doesn't work, then you can come back and do it with the alternate. It's a more slower process. Really easy. Now, the genealogy comparison searches, once you get your family tree up there and your DNA up there, then you can compare, uh, you can compare trees only. You can compare DNA match plus trees. That's always my favorite go-to because I am interested if somebody shares DNA and we share a tree, I'm going to be more likely to be able to figure out how we're matched. So, uh, and remember again, don't unzip JEDCOMs. The company does that behind the scenes. You don't want to do it. All right, so here's tier one to us. Now, this used to cost you $10 a month, and like everything else, it's a little more expensive now. Um, but honest to God, they, you know what, used to be able to could do a month at a time, and that would be enough for me. But now they've got it set up a little different. So if I want to do one month only, uh, it's $15. And for me to save money, I have to do a whole year. And it costs me more if I do it monthly, but if I pay it as a year, it's, you know, $100 for 12 months. So toss up, I, I don't know what to tell you, but it, like everything else, it's going up. Here are the tools though. You've got phasing. You've seen a little bit of phasing on my heritage today. You know, where I show that little block that I know that that represents one ancestor. That's what, um, the auto segment does and triangulation and phasing. <laughs> it pulls your DNA matches into clusters on chromosomes to be able to show you how you're matching somebody. So the fun part, um, somebody was talking to, oh, you were about the, my evil twin. Uh, All right. You take your four sisters, you put them in there and you get your mom's DNA. Now I know it's a horrible name, but that's what it does, you know. But and you have a pretty good chance of getting about eighty percent to ninety percent of your mom's DNA that way. So then you have okay. This is for the when you get bored with everything else. This is combined multiple kits into one. So what does that mean? Well. It means that if I have a 23 and me kit and I have, I think the other company is Ancestry. Can't remember, it's Ancestry or Family Tree. If I have DNA that I test with both those companies, that I can take those, merge them together because each company tests a few different areas of chromosomes. And so what I can do with that kit once I make it is that I could end up with more matches. That's basically the bottom line. On it. So do you want more matches? I'm kind of like, no, I don't need more matches. But it is a way of really looking at 
uh, and comparing the different companies and the different areas of the chromosome that they test. So you you put in ancestry DNA first, which you get a file, and then you can do other files. And then you combine them. There's instructions on this site, but then you combine those two DNA tests. Test, and it's something that GEDmatch does, and they make a super kit. And then that'll be given us a different number, and that's the one you use to run through all the tools again. Okay, and I have a question about the uh, my evil twin. Yes. You said, you know, uh, putting the DNA of four sisters in, they would get their mother's DNA. Uh, I'm, I had a brother, and so it was just two of us. Could I? Here's what you have to do when you have two. You've got maybe a 50% chance of getting 50% of your mother. or And that's the reason because you each child gets a certain amount of DNA from their parent. For example, a, a parent has 7,000 centimorgans to share with you. You're going to get about 3,500. Your brother's going to get about 3,500. It won't be the same 3,500. Although one in a million, it could be. But usually it's not. And then what's going to happen is that when you sort out the DNA that you and your brother, I'm going to make it simple. It's a little more complicated. That. But what you do is the DNA that you and your brother share together, okay, you, you pop that out because you're looking for the rest of what he has and you have. But then you have to take out the paternal matches because you're only interested in the mother's side. So you, you have to have, like I said, I'm making it simple, but basically what you have to do is have a puzzle. You want to pull out all the paternal matches, only have the maternal matches, and then you it's kind of like making a combination kit with you and your brother, but then you have to pull out the matches that match on your father's line. And then and then you then the, I prefer using DNA painter to move that results over there. It's a little easier. I think. Well, that may, that makes sense to me. Okay. So, but with four children, a woman's full DNA profile would It'd be, be pretty close. Would be would show up across the four children. They say with three children, you wow. can get about seventy five percent, and but with four, that is pretty close to one hundred percent. I'm guessing more like ninety, just because of unusualness of what tests you might use or not use, or you know different things like yeah. that. All right, so um, let's see. This is a, whoops, I did this again. Okay, that find, find the common ancestor micro. Do you know what that is? It's the most common recent ancestor. So like Rich's wife and I share a common ancestor. We haven't pinpointed it. And also his wife has to claim me as a cousin whether she wants to or not. Mm -hmm. But that's what that means. If we work the DNA and we work the paper, we might be able to find our common ancestor. It can be as close as your mother. Like I showed you examples of that today. Like when I looked at her shared matches with me and our common ancestor, it was her, right? Because I'm sharing with my mom. So that's all this means. Migrate is your common ancestor. You always want to look for your common ancestor. Now, it could be a couple. In other words, when you first start out, where you get everything sorted out, it's going to be a common ancestor couple. Hopefully, they didn't have multiple marriages. It gets a little complicated when you have a man and you has had four or five wives and kids with four or five wives, particularly when you get back into New England, but it's still doable. All right, so they have surname matches, and that's a new tool on GEDmatch. Remember, these are paid um, cluster, um, uh, pardon me, paid uh, tier one tools. So uh, let's go forward. All right. Oh, yeah, the Lazarus tool. Sorry about that. I missed that one. Yeah, Lazarus tool. I tried. <laughs> I guess what you do is you have to have for it to work effectively, you have to have the right people who have tested and you have access to their DNA. 
you can take that DNA and put it in the Lazarus tool by using kit numbers. That's how you do it, kit numbers. And then the kit numbers um, allow you to get, what? It, what's the percent on that? I'm trying to think. Depends on the relationship. Yeah, I'm thinking like if it's close, it's gotta be up around 75% or something. Yeah. You have a situation if you had four siblings. Yeah. You get, you're gonna, yeah. So you, I mean, you would get your DNA from your mom and dad. You just have to separate it out. Yeah. That would be a, another tool you could use. Where it should be like your Yeah. Your parent. So take cousins on one side. See, I would kind of build one for my grandma. Yeah, it's it's complicated, and it'll tell you if you don't have enough matches. And that's what I always got. I didn't have enough matches because they re they they require a certain percent of DNA before they will finish the the kit. But they only got to get fifteen hundred. Yes, I, that's that's what I was looking for. Fifteen hundred. Yep. 1,500 centimorgans. All right, so when you log on to GEDmatch, it'll tell you the number of users online that are um, fighting for bandwidth and fighting for research bandwidth. 159 is really good. I mean, that's not gonna cause you a problem. When it gets up around three to 400, you're gonna see some slow work. And I'll just warn you, about that. That's one of the things that they do. As you can see uh, down here, I've got, um, I showed you what two tests are. Um, I don't use uh, the correct names. I use an, an ID. Uh, we're both on the police. You know, we both say, okay, you can use our DNA for police. And they, and they do it for a good purpose. So I don't have any problem with it. Um, I can edit it at any time. But I have permission. That's the key. If you manage a lot of kids before you, you know, click on that the police have access, you need to have that tester's permission. Now, I've been managing my mom's DNA from the beginning of time. So she's said, do whatever you want to do with it. So I'm cool there. So anyway, it will tell you when you upload your DNA kit. And it will tell you if. It's process complete, everything is good. Uh, I can edit or delete the profile. Uh, it'll say likely duplicate. Like uh, I worked with a person that actually put two kits on two separate times and they were the same kit. So we kept getting this error message. So she had downloaded her own DNA twice. <laughs> so there's a research kit and you can designate a research kit. And then you have unknown status. You know, when we were talking about building all those interesting kits, like the Lazarus and that, they can be research kits. Okay, upload your DNA. And right there, it tells you that these are the sites that they will take. Now, what you do is you have that DNA on your computer. You click upload your DNA and you grab a hold of it, it'll bring out a browser, you pick it up. And the time frame for processing the DNA, at one point it was like anywhere from two to seven days because it's got to go through their system. I haven't done any recently, so I can't give you an update, but I, I've seen that it takes anywhere from two days on. So here is GEDmatch. You will be given Okay, there we go. Can you do the? Yep, thank you. Okay, so if you're a new user, 
you want to watch how to use GEDmax. Critical. I mean, it's a great webinar. It really teaches you what to do, leads you through it step by step. And if you're interested, like you were particularly inter interested about, you can look at the GED match and law enforcement matching. They always give you an update what's going on. So they've been improving some things. They'll have notes here that you need to read. They'll keep you updated with the site. So as I told you before, I like projects. So what you do is I only pulled up 100. There's 838 projects. Basically, they are mostly country origin or surname origin with a few exceptions, but for the most part. Now, these are the ones that I belong to, and that's because I'm trying to break down that Irish brick wall. <laughs> Does anybody else have Irish brick walls? Oh yeah, we just love them. So then I'm, I'm starting to branch out to Scotland. I have early Nauvoo settlers. And this is my, the thing that's my thorn in my side. There are so many stories about the Skaggs that I don't know what's true and what isn't true. What I do know is there is a massive Y-DNA Skaggs research project that has proven that there's two James Skaggs married to two separate women. And they're about the same age, like a year difference. Okay. I don't know which Skaggs I come from. I spent Finally, I found a guy that I can prove his paper back to this grandfather, my third great grandfather. And he goes, I just don't believe in that DNA stuff. I can't test. Cool, you're the only one I know. They're all females. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. But anyway, so that's my thorn because I know I can't break it with paper because they came in in 1700s. They landed in Virginia and Kentucky. And so it's just like, you know. I can cry on this one. So it tells you how to join some of these projects. You know, it'll bring up information. Here's one up at the top I brought up just to show you. Do you have Smith, Jones, or Browns in your DNA projects? Okay, there's a project just for you. You join it and then they have a Facebook group for all those names that are all the same. So anyway. Here is the pro they have another tool on GEDmatch that helps you decide what you've got in a relationship. So I have a cousin that shares with me 342 centimorgans. And if you take a look, 52% probability it's a second, first cousin, one time removed, or I have. Uh, first cousin removed, one time removed. So I got three choices, 52%, but don't wait, wait. We've got a 30% chance. It is a first cousin once removed group. Got a 28% there. I've got a half first cousin, 20% there. So this starts getting lower, but I can't rule it out because DNA doesn't always wants to agree with what we think. So you always have to be really careful. But what I do know is that person is a very good DNA match and I can get all kinds of information on it. I can do a chromosome browser with it to see exactly. Remember I had that ethnicity chart of how ancestor broke down my Scottish. You know, I'm gonna be looking at Scottish and Irish. Let's face it, that's where I need to work. So I'm gonna look at this shared match of 342, see if I can plug it into one of those ethnicities. Then I'm probably gonna write them and I'll say, hey, during my research, I found that you more than likely share on my Scottish side. Here are some names. Do any of those sound familiar to you? So that's how you wanna put your case together and hopefully they wanna write back. All right, this is what the chromosome, 
I don't know what the painter looks like on GEDmatch. This is my first cousin, a uh, paternal first cousin. And it gives you a color code up here that tells you how, how much you should agree or disagree with the color coding. You can see this is purple. This is purple and this is purple. That's what I'm gonna be looking at. And it also gives me a little chart here that tells me on chromosome one where it starts and where it ends and how much it was. And it does the same thing on the second location. See this little break here? Gives me another location. I can take this information and plug it into DNA Painter on their wonderful site. And then I can say, okay, I know that this is my paternal first cousin. This is where I share. So then I'm going to be looking at matches that I can put in this area. That's going to help me figure out how they match my family. For those people that refuse to write back and tell you how you're related, right? So this is the 23 chromosome. And we talked a little bit about it on Family Tree DNA this morning. But just a review, um, everybody has a 23rd chromosome. It's called the sex chromosome. A male's going to have an XY and a female's going to have two Xs. Okay, you guys are going to answer the question, yell it out. Who, the woman gets the X from who? Mother. Who? Mother. Both. They get an X from their father, X from yeah. their mother. Okay, the male, who do they get the X from? You got that one. And they get the Y from their dad, right? That's how this all comes down. So this is my first cousin. And what's interesting about this is she's my paternal first cousin. Her dad and my dad were brothers. So we know that they got their X from their mother, our grandmother. So this DNA represents on this 23 chromosome, for sure, our grandmother. So it gives you a breakdown, three locations. See, it kind of like went from grandmother to her dad, <clears throat> excuse me, to her. And for me, it was my grandmother, my dad to me. So we got little bits different, right? But this shows that we share a common grandmother. That's what that shows. So don't rule out the X. It can be really exciting. So you can see the start and end centimorgans. And I can take this information, do a copy paste on the DNA painter, and I can I can designate it as Nettie Mick, because she's my grandmother. And my Paternal first cousin's grandmother. Nettie Mick gave us this. So, so that's the first step. How does it show that she that you have the same grandmother? Her dad and my dad are <laughs> brothers. They're both males. Right. They can only get the X from their mother. No, but what you're looking at, how does it show when you say it shows their well, because this is the 23 chromosome. This is the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. Mm -hmm. So a female is going to get two X's, mm -hmm. one from her dad and one from her mom. Okay, she's my paternal first cousin, so it can only be from my dad, and hers can only be from her dad. And they're brothers. <clears throat> so this little bit of DNA can only come from our grandmother. Okay. Did that make sense? If you don't, shake your head. No, that's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. You can take a picture of this. I don't have any problem with it. I can say without a doubt that one of the books that I, I have three books that I recommend. This is one of them. Um, I think you have it as well. Did you ever buy it? No, you didn't. Um, I like the way he lays things out. Um, I've given you some uh, YouTube 
there's a, a website on ancient DNA because I love playing with ancient DNA. And then you have the archive web. So let me know when you all have your pictures. Um, moving on to DNA painter. <coughs> Okay, does anyone have any questions? I kind of answer your questions as you go, but maybe you'll have something. All this part of Gen Match is at no cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the others. Yeah, there's some paid sites. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. All right, so what is DNA Painter? It grows on you. <laughs> Um, DNA Painter was started a few years back by a man in England, and he is just the nicest guy. He wanted to have a tool that would help him figure out how he's related to people. And none of the other sites were really doing a really good job of that. In fact, I think he's really driven a lot of the companies and tools that we're now getting from these DNA classes or DNA companies you know, forward. I think he's been a, definitely a, um, a motivator. Um, he's, he does free webinars that you can get a hold of on that family webinar legacy site that I talked about earlier. Um, he also, I want to kind of get there. Um, he also has, um, you can get a free account. It doesn't cost you anything. So you just make an account and then you start reading. He'll give you all kinds of information. I love free. Um, you will learn so much from his papers that he's written in easy terms to understand. And I just pulled up one. Uh, why would you map your chromosome? Okay, that's a question I'm throwing out to you. Why would you match your chromosome? Anybody? Because Rich and I had, believe it or not, Rich and I had this discussion. He says, I don't know why I want to do this. And then he got me into this. I got to tell you a story on him. Then he got me on this site that he says, oh, everything, everybody's writing about this. This is great. So he knew I was a sucker. So I signed up. I said, you get the next one. It required a 350-page book step by step to learn it. It's still sitting on my computer. That's <laughs> awful. Awful, but it was supposed to tell us how we were all matched. And then Johnny Pearl came out and oh my gosh, he's just, he's marvelous. So anybody have an answer? Why would you want to know your chromosome browser? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the tool that's going to help you break down your DNA matches and who they share with. Let's say you have Joe Smith that turns out to have 500 centimorgans and he doesn't have a tree or he's adopted, how are you going to figure out where he belongs in your tree? Helps brick walls. Helps brick walls. Yep. All of that and many more. So you can see some questions here and just go through it. And, you know, it kind of is self-learning. It'll teach you why you should do things. Um, you'll notice that this is a video right there. Um, it's not a live link because I can't show the video on this program, but when you get an account, you can go there and listen to the video. Very user friendly. All right, so how much help do you need on DNA Painter? Always do what they say, read it. You know, watch the videos. You're going to learn knowledge that's going to help you every step of the way. Um, you can see. He's got a help sec section that has a page of articles and resources. He's got a, a dedicated P DNA painter user group on Facebook. How many are you on Facebook? If you're not on Facebook for your genealogy, oh, you must do that. I believe it or not, I do, I do so much research on Facebook with, DNA, with all types of groups uh, from all over the world. You know, anything you want to do with Ancestry, DNA, DNA Painter, Heritage, Ethnicity. There's a Facebook group for every country in the world. Yes. So how did you choose like which ones? You can go in or out. 
sometimes I'll think this looks good. I join it and then I see they're not active or they're not really providing any information. I leave. And I'm up to about 187 groups now. So I, like I said, I'm compulsive here. All right, so this is a good thing that they do is they have three <laughs> webinars. Every one of them, as far as I'm concerned, score a 10. They're down to earth, they're gonna teach. And they do this every time they add a new tool. Here are the free tools. And I need to explain about DNA Painter. You can have a free account. And with that free account, you can use the free tools. You can only have one tree. So you have to think about what tree you really want to work. Now you can get a paid subscription. No, I have a paid subscription. I think it's $55 a year. I can have all kinds of research trees out there. I do. I probably have about 20 now. But I finally just said, hey, this tool is what I need. $55 a year is a bargain. So it'll visualize your direct lines. It'll map your segments from your DNA ancestors. Now you, un you understand where that information's coming from is like GEDmatch or family tree DNA, because they're the only ones that give you that chromosome and my heritage. But the only person that's gonna give you that 23 chromosome, GEDmatch and family tree DNA. So you can use it to match and identify unknown ancestors. And you're gonna figure out how you're related to a DNA match. All those are free tools. Now, this is what are the odd tools. Before you use it, watch the video and read. And if you have any questions, ask somebody else that's done the Watto tree. Um, they've changed it quite a bit. It tells you that right here, that the, the problem is going to be if you have a dozen, a double cousin relationship. I showed you one of those today on mine that was um, two brothers, two sisters from different families that got married. And that's, they, everything is a double, is a double sec cousin for me. So I get more DNA. He's not gonna be a good one to try to use on Watto. I'm gonna get not true samples. Um, three, four siblings relationships. Anybody know what a three fourths relationship is? Well, I hope Rich will kind of help me out. It's where you potentially have a mother and father that marries a brother or sister after one of them dies and they have a child. So it's not going to show up as a full sibling. It's going to show up as a three-fourths sibling because they're sharing more DNA. I think I said that right. I'm going to say it again. You have a mother and father, one died, and they married a brother or the wife dies and the father marries their sister. And they have a child. So then that becomes this three-fourths sibling. Complicated, but that's the way it is. World's that way. So, and then it doesn't work, whoops, doesn't work very well on endogamous ancestry. So you got to be aware if you have that, you know, that's going to be your Jewish ethnicity, Quakers, Amish. Um, sometimes in the deep South, you'll have some populations there. Um, it can vary. So, yeah. So you need to understand that concept. So what are the odds? And this is what's really interesting because your target's name's going to go here. So let's say it's Joyce and born in 1950. <clears throat> and my question is, I want to find out who her grandparents are. Okay. That's assuming she shares DNA with me and my family. So that's exactly the question that I asked Watto. And I've got this, I think I told somebody about my seven year journey with this match. Um, she's just the sweetest lady you ever wanted to meet. She's like 88 years old. And we 
it's been going on for a good 10 years or 12. And she just refused to accept that I could be in her family or she could be in my family because her tree and my tree, there's no matches in names or anything. But she is a complete DNA match with my whole family, with my second cousins, my third cousins. Okay, what does that tell me real quick when I know I have a match like that? Got a non-paternal event somewhere in somebody's tree. Don't know exactly where yet, but that's going to be my research project. So Watto lets me do that. So first of all, hmm, uh, what I did is I put in the grandfather. You can't see him. This thing is so big it wouldn't fit. So I put in all the kids that you know he and his wife had. <clears throat> Um, I made things like unborn child. I could never find that he had a child, but I assume maybe he could. And then I had a hypothesis that this would be um, my gene. So I did the same thing here. And so what a hypothesis is for what of is does this amount of DNA in the correct spot that I've suggested that this is a hypothesis for. So let's take a look at a different way of looking at it. It gives me a breakdown in writing that shows a factor. And I'd already kind of figured this out. It says, Jean is the child of Eleanor and grandchild of John H. Ross. So that means one of his sons is the father of June, which makes her my second cousin, right? So she has a score of 631 or 681. I can't read it. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on there. She's This hypothesis is pretty much telling me that my mind is telling me correctly. Now, have I figured out which one of the boys that my second great grandfather had? Which one is her father? No, that's still a process that I'm working on. But these are all the males that I kind of put in and I did hypotheses on. And you can see that all the men are kind of grouping around 16. This one, I put it down as a half sibling or a half grandchild. It's giving me a lower score, but not impossible. So I always have to keep that in mind. Then I decided to use Blaine Bittinger's um, little chart. And um, off the top of my head, I think she's shared 327 centimorgans. I think that's what I was using before. So now Blaine's, and he is with DNA Painter there, so it's like one page. So you can, I can gather you know, from the amount of DNA, you can kind of see that she could fit in anywhere along here. So the next thing I have to do is I have to look at her age and the ages of these folks. Can it be, can it make sense with age and uh, where they're located on the tree? <laughs> All right, so this is another way that they look at that DNA and it shows that it's almost split. So look at the variety of choices I'm going to have. For this time, I'm going to eliminate the 7% because I've got 97% right here that I can look at and, and remove or play with. Um, but I can't ignore the 7% because she could still be this too. So you can see it's kind of complicated, but at least it shows you you're look, working on a complicated case. And that's why I said she finally agreed that we were cousins, everything pointed to that. We just haven't figured out how yet. We're working on it. I know which grandparents or great grandparents we share. All right, so here's another way that they diagram uh, for you to look at it, because a lot of people, this is easy. A lot of people prefer this. So it's just a matter of, of choice. So now what I wanna do 
is I want to do a chromosome mapping for genes. You know, I want to see if I can figure out by chromosome mapping where she might fit in that family that has eight or nine boys, you know, because I got, got some work to do. <clears throat> All right, so this is what it kind of, this is what it looks like after you, well, this happens to be mine, but this is what it looks like when you go out and find cousin matches and you, through ancestry, you might know that they're, what your common ancestor is, like great grandparents, two times great grandparents, whatever it might be. You kind of narrowed it down to how these DNA matches match you. And then you can come over here and do a painting of it. And the colors, whoops, did that wrong. The colors, um, you can go in and uh, do plus and minus and you can narrow that um, place on the chromosome and be more selective. This is another way of looking at your DNA matches when you let it expand. So it's going to give you the name and the area that they're going to be sharing with you on. And obviously all of these are my family on my mom's side. All right, so free versus pay. Are you ready to sign up? Um, I tell everybody, do a free kit, play with it, get your DNA there, decide what you want to do. It always helps to have two kits so you can, you know, use that as a, a, a counter site. Like if you have a paternal match and a maternal match and you, you'll be able to tell what site it is, especially if they're first cousins. And so I'm um, going to move on here. This is what the paid site uh, does. It gives you access to all the tools. Well, oh, free memory, you get access to all the tools, uh, limited to one map, only one time you can make a chromosome map or a Watto tree or any of that. No access for bulk import functionality and limit to one tree and import to fourth great grandparent level. So I could take a JEDCOM and make it to the fourth great grandparent and I can download or upload that tree to DNA Painter with all my information. I don't have to type it. So if you subscribe, you get all of these right here. All right, questions. By the way, you don't know how difficult it was for me to time this to be 45 minutes. <laughs> Because anybody that knows me here knows that I can talk more than 45 minutes. Okay, questions? Did I burn your brain cells now? I want to tell you, DNA Painter, um, I taught that a couple of years ago. I think we did three days, six hours a day. And they walked away like near in the headlight and said that they all wanted to do it again because they, it just, it, it's, it's really easy, but you have to get started correctly. So have fun, enjoy your DNA. Thank you for coming.